and welcome to another teacher talk session tonight uh, tonight we are going to have our 77 sessions and it's really great <laughs> for us and tonight uh, we are going to have our guests from Scotland yes we are going to go Scotland tonight okay and tonight our guest is a teacher trainer CELTA course uh, coordinator and CELT S and CELT P course coordinator and Delta course tutor from Anatolia Training Institute. All right, Simge Gulaj O'Grady. So when she comes, we are going to start our live session with her. Let me invite her. And there she is. Okay. Yes, I'm really <laughs> sorry about it. I really uh, don't know what happened, but sometimes this happens. I'm really, really sorry, Simge Hocam, for no this all, connection no problem. But I, I think I. No, 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 no. It was about, I think, my connection. I don't know. But sometimes this happens, and I'm really sorry about this connection no, problem. No, 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 no. All right. So if you're ready, and we can start. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I know about you, Simge Ojan, but our audiences maybe would like to know about you. So can you tell us about yourself, please, and a bit about your wonderful experiences, too? Of course. Uh, my name is Simge Gulaj O'Grady. I um, studied at Hacettepe University. My BA was in linguistics. And then I um, worked in Ankara University somewhere for a year in the language course. Then I started working in Bilkent University prep program, and that's where I did all my teacher training. So I got ISAL first, and then I did um, an MA in management, education, management and mm -hmm. education, and I did my Delta diploma there as well. Um, mm -hmm. Then I left Bilkent. I lived in Paris for a while, and then I did a wow. year in Kuwait. I worked at the university in Kuwait as well. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to Turkey in 2015 and I got trained to be a Salsa trainer. And then a year after that Salsa trainer, I did it for as a freelance for it for a couple of years. And then I think since 2018, I've been with um, Simon in mm -hmm. Anatolia Training Institute doing this um, full time. Wow. I recently moved to Scotland. That's why in your nice post, yeah. we had the <laughs> Scottish time as well. Yeah. We looked very nationalistic by not putting UK, but actually putting <laughs> Scotland there. Yeah. So I, and I start, I actually, uh, after so many years, I'm teaching again now. I'm doing um, part-time ESOL in the Dundee and Agnes, uh, Angus College here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm doing 12 hours of ESOL classes for their learners, for the immigrants in Scotland. Wow. It's very interesting. But for... For the immigrants in Scotland, yeah, yeah. is it is it difficult to teach something to them? <laughs> well, it's not actually. It's I mean, compared to the uh, because all my my experience was with private university students, my main teaching experience. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to them, it's great because like um, motivated students, they want to learn, they have to learn, they need to find a job, they need to integrate into the society. They don't pay for these classes. The Scottish oh. government offers them. Wow. So um, it's just, uh, for me, the most interest. I only had one week, I just started last week. For me, the most interesting part was, was um, there are people who say they've been here uh, mm -hmm. for 10 years but they're in the elementary class still struggling with like things like MSR I see. So, uh -huh. because they've been in their community for so long they've been just uh, mm -hmm. living with the people from their countries so I see. Um, that was interesting for me but it was fun uh, to go back I to see. teaching I see. Thank you very much, Simge Hojam. By the way, I just want to remind our audience, if you have any questions to Simge Hojam, please write them into the question part, not on the comment part. If you write them into the comment part, maybe we can miss it, miss your question mm -hmm. while she is talking or while I'm talking. I can't read sometimes the comments, so it's better if you write your questions to the question part. There was a, Because there's a question 
I realized how that how did you find that opportunity to job opportunity? Well, we uh, first of all we moved to Scotland because my husband is British. So let's not lie to each other about you know <laughs> I have Delta, I have Delta, Scotland open uh, her eye, her um, arms for me. Let's not kid ourselves. So um, obviously we moved. I, I came here on a spousal visa that gave me the right to work. This specific job, though, I just saw it and like applied for it obviously having an MA having Delta being a teacher trainer I'm I'm a qualified English teacher so uh, it wasn't it wasn't a problem but if this is a general question in terms of how can we find jobs in those countries unfortunately if you don't have a work permit especially now it's a bit more difficult but you can mm -hmm. start by getting a certificate like CELTA or if you're an experienced teacher perhaps a diploma um, uh -huh. I see uh, I see. Like Delta, they're asking mm -hmm. where the question. Part yeah, is. where is the question part? There is a, there is a, there is a bubble at the bottom. Probably oh, yeah. you can see it. It's a question mark in it. If you click on it, you can write your questions there, so we, I can ask your question to her. All right. So thank you very much for the information, Simgojan. So let's I'm move. Not, and I'm not your I'm Turkish. I'm <laughs> she's <is> Turkish, <laughs> but she's an English teacher. <laughs> it's really okay. nice that. Well, 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 <laughs> that's really nice. She calling it oh, well, I don't, I mean, but sometimes it happens. But she's a very, very good teacher, trainer, and educator, and English teacher, by the way. So oh, it's okay. All right. So according to your experiences, Simgojan, when you think about that, what was your actually your uh, or were your turning point or points in your own education? Mm -hmm. Um, I think I always wanted to be an English teacher. So when I chose linguistics as a department, that wasn't by chance. I, I wanted to study English, knowing that I want to be an English teacher. It wasn't for me. It wasn't like maybe I'll become a translator. Maybe I'll become this. So I've always wanted to be um, a teacher. So probably because I did all my um, professional development, let's say, all my teaching mm -hmm. training, because you don't learn about teaching in the linguistics department, uh, I'd say starting to work in Wilkant University. At the time, mm -hmm. obviously, Dr. Simon Phipps was there. He was the head of mm -hmm. teacher training, and he developed this nice program of Delta integrated with an MA and I feel lucky to be to have done ICELT as well because it's a yeah. longer um, program than CELTA. Cambridge stops doing it now. I, you know, ICELT is not offered anymore. So I'd say one one clear turning point would be starting my job at Beacon. The second, literally, with my job at Beacon, <laughs> <laughs> uh, because that allowed me to go abroad and also come back and start uh, my training um, with Simon. So those probably. Mm -hmm. the, I see. All right. Wonderful. And thank you very much. And so, when it, Simgojan, when you think about all your experiences, the teaching experiences, probably you have a kind of a teaching philosophy. So, what is your philosophy of teaching? I mean, obviously, because this is what we teach in our courses as well. Learners mm -hmm. come first. So, that's the, 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 the Cambridge teacher training philosophy as well. You train teachers mm -hmm. so that learners learn better. Mm -hmm. the, the whole idea is, in the end, the whole idea is to uh, make learners achieve their potential and everybody in the class achieve their potential. So I'd say definitely learner-centered teaching would be one, one main philosophy, trying to get away from this um, teacher-directed instruction, you know, the... the Mm -hmm. the teacher on the board explaining everything kind of instruction. I think I um, teachers of English also need to be very um, careful with um, context as well. That's something I think that is lacking in most of the English teaching instruction. It's like I basically see. starting to teach something but not really contextualizing the language, not really showing how it's used, and which is also related to um, having a more communicative approach uh, mm -hmm. in the classroom, helping learners communicate. So I, I'd say that would be my main philosophy, helping philosophy. learners communicate and doing your um, lesson as student-centered as possible. I always I say see. in my CELTA sessions or so, um, when we are giving feedback to CELTA le uh, lessons, teaching practice, I always say, think about like what mm -hmm. would 
what would change or what would have changed in the learner's lives if this wasn't a lesson in this classroom, but mm -hmm. if it was done, uh, you gave all the handouts, they did at home. What would change? If you think nothing would change, that means it wasn't an effective lesson because yeah. them being in the classroom, them being uh -huh. with you should um, have a meaning, should matter. That's why mm -hmm. uh, you as a teacher creating the opportunities for them to interact with each other and you as a teacher to give them effective feedback uh, would be key. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shingo Jam. There is a question. By yes, the way, dear Singe it. teacher, I'm an English yeah, teacher at a state school and want to take a SELT S to be a better teacher. Would you advise that and how would it help me to improve myself? Thanks in advance. Yes, definitely. I, I, I think if you do not have any um, em employment reasons to take an international certificate, so I know that in Turkey now you need to have a SELT or a DELT or any international certificate to work at a university. But if in this situation, for example, if you work in a state school and you only do, want to do a, a course to improve yourself, it's not that you want to go abroad or anything like that, I would definitely recommend SELTA, SELTA over SELTA. One, it's cheaper. Two, um, it is more closely connected to your classroom practices in the primary mm -hmm. and in the secondary school. Because it's online, you can access the content in any way you like. You can go back. We usually offer CELTA. We do have part-time CELTA as well. But in South B CELTA, you do your teaching practice in your own classes as well. So I we see. watch you in your own classes and you have um, you get feedback based on um, mm -hmm. based on your lessons with your learners. So the feedback can be more relevant as well. So yes, I would I would recommend doing um, Southwest. That would be very I good. Um, Ankara is... does have I can yeah I can read. Ah, the I was going to, I was going to ask you here because it's here probably you can see the question uh, yes. why Ankara doesn't have a face to face course for Celta a full time. Does. Um, it, we do full-time courses in the summer. If you continue following Anatolia Training Institute in here, in on Facebook, on um, LinkedIn, um, because it, in Ankara, the demographic is usually right now, like um, who does Salta with us is mainly practicing teachers. So they usually have their break uh, to, to be able to spare full four weeks yeah. in the summer. So um, we do, we will have two courses hopefully this summer as well. One in, we usually have one in June, one in starting in June, ending in July, and one starting in July, ending in mm -hmm. August because of the Byrams being in the yeah. summer now. I think Kurban, which one is it? That Something one of like them is this. It's sense of Kurban or Rama. I yeah, probably, yeah, could, yeah eight, eight, eight Mubarak probably. It's yeah, yeah. definitely so, that part. Um, but we will have courses, I full see. courses in mm -hmm. the summer. Thank you very much, Tim Gojam. Uh, Tim Gojam, I know that you have been working in ATI and Anatolia Training Institute for a long time, but and can you tell us about ATI a little bit? Mm -hmm. So we do teacher training and consultation. So Dr. Simon Phipps, um, after working in Bicamp and managing all the teacher training and professional development there for like 20, I think more than 20 years, he... Um, he founded this company, Anatolia Training Institute. It's um, so we we mainly offer Cambridge courses. We offer Salta Delta and Salta SLP, but we also mm -hmm. have our tra tailor-made um, certificate in English language teaching course that we've done in Metro College in Ankara before. And I think some parts of it, you guys, yeah, Suzanne was dealing with, yeah. you did it as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I did it as well. Some other cities, yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't involved in that one. I was only involved in the Ankara one at the time. Uh, right now, we are doing one for the Ankara University uh, schools, the, the Ankara University primary, secondary school teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, and Simon also um, does some consultation, curriculum assessment consultation with universities as well. I see. Okay, thank you very much. Actually, you mentioned some of the uh, the, the, the programs the that you pro mm -hmm. yeah, the courses you provided, but what programs do you provide for teachers and also for the students if you mm. would like to add anything else to do it? Yeah, so mainly for uh, new 
more or less a novice, new teachers or teachers with no formal um, international qualification or education, um, or people who think their English is good enough to teach English, but they don't come from an English teaching background. Uh, we offer SALTA for those people. SALTA is a certificate program and uh, it can be either full-time, part-time, online, face-to-face. -face. There are different options. Mm -hmm. um, Delta is uh, kind of a step further, but a big step further, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's a diploma program. It's uh, the same level as an MA in the UK. And uh, this is usually... Is, it, is this bad microphone, Matt? No, nope. I can is hear you. Way, is there a way I can change? No, I can't hear. Okay, maybe if I was on the phone... Um, microphone because they usually think this is not good should we try that it's your choice if you want you can try it okay uh, because Mert has been saying can't hear me well is if this now is it's, better, it's really Mert, it's good it's is good. it good now because i switched mm -hmm. to the phone internet oh, okay okay um yeah delta is for people who have uh, ideally who have done another training course before and have a lot of teaching experience mm -hmm. and saltes and salt p are for um, primary and secondary level teachers. Um, they need to be uh, practicing teachers. Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks, Mart. I think it's my um, headphones. Maybe they don't have a good microphone. Um, <laughs> it's okay. So that's for primary and secondary school um, teachers. Mm -hmm. For practicing teachers, they do some online modules. They um, do some tasks. They do some reflection. Mm -hmm. And we also... Um, we also visit their classes to watch them teach and to I give see. them feedback. Mm -hmm. I got it. All right. And that's all. Is that all? Thank you. About it? Yes, mainly. Okay. Oh, Wonderful. we have, sorry, sorry. We have also a train the trainer course. I completely forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> we have the That's Cambridge good. train the trainer course for experienced teachers who might consider a career in training in the future or maybe they want to work in the professional development units of their schools and stuff so um mm -hmm. they we have that I as see. well it's very clear cut right now i do all the self test self test self -test, <laughs> and Suzanne does all the other stuff so i, I forget about them no no problem it's okay whatever you say is in your job all right then so uh i would like to know i would like to ask another questions about which is TKT is something related mm, with TKT, yes. with teacher knowledge test. Yes. And so what is the importance of this TKT for teachers and can every teacher get it easily? Yeah, because uh, there are two things we need to understand. One is TKT is uh, normally, like you said, it's a test. So it has different modules. There are uh, module one, module two, module three, and there are two specialized modules. So basically anybody can sit that test. Uh, when once you mm -hmm. book find a center who offers them obviously um, book your place take the test and you get the result so that's one way of getting the TKT yeah the there's also you sit the TKT module one exam at the end of a South S course and the TKT young learners exam after um, at the end of the South P uh, course so it kind of two different routes to take the uh, TKT here but yeah, anybody can take it, but it doesn't have any teaching component. Keep in mind, mm -hmm. this is a test, testing your knowledge on paper. So it will give I you see. a paper saying this person knows about planning and teaching with young learners. This person knows about management of learning, blah, blah, blah. So they can, you can read about those modules online, uh, but it doesn't, you, you don't get observed and get feedback or anything like that with TKT. If I you see. sit the TKT module one or TKT young learners at the end of a self P or self S course, that's a different story. Then you get both um, certificates. You get a certificate for the course and you also get your test results. I see. Okay. I see some names I know from old courses joining. <laughs> yeah, they're joining. I see that. Sometimes they're going and they're coming back. Let me, let me remind them if you have any questions, please write them into the 
question part so we can ask directly to Simya Ujam. All right. So I would like to talk about a little bit the new trends in ELT. Like, you know, that there are lots of new trends coming up in a very quickly, in especially in ELT world. So which teaching actually trends do you like most, like such as task-based learning, project-based learning, game-based learning, or etc.? I mean, this is not going to sound very good, but I don't really follow them, to be honest, because like, even when I was in ICE, when I was doing ICELT, even then we were reading about this, you know, presentation practice, production, and then Harmer changed the name of it, activates mm -hmm. something, something, I don't even remember. <laughs> to me, it's all the same, but you just, you need, you need those buzzwords, I guess. Uh-huh to keep things going. So if you ask me whatever works in your class, because yes, um, it goes back to my teaching philosophy being all, all about learners and learner centeredness. Mm -hmm. Task-based learning is, I think, great. It is a really great methodology, but would it work in your class? I don't know. I don't know your learners. Um, mm -hmm. Some contexts may not be suitable for that. So um, I think whatever works for your learners, but this doesn't mean that, for example, in our context, Turkish learners are used to the teacher explaining everything. So this shouldn't mean the teacher's like, oh, but my learners like me explaining things. That's mm -hmm. a different story because there is research. Second yeah. language acquisition research clearly shows that if the learners are more cognitively, actively involved in the learning process, learning yeah. is more memorable. So this is not about preference. But in terms of what method works when, I think it should depend on um, the learners, whether they benefit from it, what your aims are in that class, I and see. so on. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Ajam. Thank you very much. So I know that, uh, or maybe, of course, probably the, uh, the teachers, the teachers choose different types of assignments to give their students about what they teach in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, what types of assignments do you like to give or do you choose to give your students or, for example, the teachers that you teach over there? Um, in the teacher training sessions, I usually try and assign some uh, post-session reading so that if uh, they had um, trouble with some of the ideas in the session or if they want to um, reinforce their learning or expand it a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good type of, I think, assignment to give. In my language classes right now, I really just check what right now I'm, because I just started, I'm in, process, I'm in the process of getting to know them. So uh, whatever I observe, there, I basically, because I have three hour classes and I only have one break in the middle. So I just observe them during the first half and what I perceive their main needs to be. And I just, in the break time, I do some extra photocopies and depending on my time, I set them as homework, some of them, and mm -hmm. some of them I do in the class. I so see. I think um, mainly those mechanical kind of exercises. So once you do a grammar point, you need to first uh -huh. very quickly check their understanding of form, of course. But you shouldn't, if you ask me, you shouldn't spend too much time on those gap fills and all that in the I classroom. See. Instead, uh -huh. you should be doing the communicative stuff in the classroom so you can observe and see what they can, they can't do, correct their mistakes and all that. Because, and the rest of the mechanical exercises, all these course book type things you can set to be done at home because then you can quickly give them an answer key or check them in the next lesson and they can mm -hmm. take their time trying to, you know, uh, work out everything. So I'd say uh, for a language classroom, those kind of things should be perhaps set as homework and communication should be the main center of I the understand. classroom. I understand. Thank you, Ajam. Thank you very much. And probably when you teach the, the, the teachers or maybe to the students, sometimes they ask you, uh, Singo Jim, can you tell us about your some good teaching experiences in your career to learn about you? But this time I'm going to ask you the vice versa. Can you tell us one of your best teaching experiences in your career? If I you mean, have, of course. <laughs> my first lesson was a disaster. Oh, my goodness. I remember it so clearly in Tamar. It was an elementary class. And it was like very crowded for a language school for some reason like 16 people or something. I mean, for obviously for states, people who work <laughs> in the states, because that's really, but for a language school, I guess, I found it really a lot, I guess, at the time. 
And I, I didn't plan things very well, I guess, because I didn't know how to plan things at the time. Uh -huh. I, I started doing random things. I didn't really, um, I didn't really have any, I had to like rush in the break time to, to do more copies because they were finishing things a lot faster. When I reflect on it now, though, I was just giving them like gap fills and stuff, not really making them, you know, communicate with each other or even, okay, they're elementary, but a basic dialogue like, hi, my name is, what's your name? Even like if you ask, pairs to repeat that that takes like in a cl crowded class like that that's it that takes a lot of time but i didn't know at the time <laughs> that was that was really bad and once in my one of my training sessions i didn't again it's all about knowing your learners the, the my bad teaching experience was lack of planning this time i planned very well but i didn't know the group uh -huh. and I think I might have overestimated their English um, abilities. Uh -huh. So I think maybe I was, because I, I, I speak very fast. I think some of them probably didn't understand me. I heard a couple of them saying to each other after the session, like she spoke too fast in Turkish. So, um, so that was my bad training experience. But this time, not knowing your mm -hmm. audience. I guess was the problem. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Singo Jam. All right. So let's move to another question. So, what uh, are you most excited about for the next year? And are you ready for that? Ah, uh, yes. I mean, <laughs> just moved to Scotland. So, <laughs> I'm excited about the famous winters. We'll see. Everybody uh -huh. keeps talking about how difficult <laughs> our lives will be here. And I keep saying I'm from Ankara, it's not going to affect me, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are right now in a um, temporary house, the faculty housing, uh, because uh -huh. of my husband's job. So we are hoping to get a place of our own. That's exciting. And uh, of course, for my work, after so many years, I'm back to teaching now. So it's very, it will be very exciting <laughs> for me to see uh, my students' progress. And in these um, these whole classes I'm doing, there's no testing. I mean, they take the Scottish government exam at the end of the year, but in the college, <laughs> they, we don't do any exams. So it's all up to us to observe their progress, uh -huh. talk to them to see if they are learning. So that's going to be very interesting for me. If they compared to Beacon University, which is my main teaching experience, I was shocked mm -hmm. because. I was asking them, okay, where is the curriculum? Where is the syllabus? And they're like, no, I mean, get to know your learners and just do whatever you want. And I'm, this is the book because somebody started before me and taken over the class. So they give me the book and this is the book you are using. And I said, okay, until which page am I supposed to finish by the end of mm -hmm. the semester? And they're like, whatever you like. Whatever you like. <laughs> and I'm like, how can it be? Because they, they trust the teachers. All the teachers there are um, at a diploma level. The minimum qualification uh -huh. is Delta. It's a small place, a small group of teachers. So basically, the, 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 the management trusts you in the classroom and says, get to know your learners, get to know their needs. You know the context is ESOL. They are trying to survive in Scotland, learning English. So just uh, meet their needs. So I, I'm, I'm wonderful. It's going to be the first time I'm going to be this free <laughs> teaching. That's it's great. really great. It's really yeah. great. I, I, I hope you're going you're gonna to have a great time about I that, about to. it. <laughs> And by the way, Meltem, Meltem, would you say it's fine? The speed of your speech. To talk. Thank it's you. Really good. <laughs> it's <laughs> great. Good. It's really clear. All right then. Okay, so I know that you have a kind of, uh, maybe a kind of a seminar or webinar about the pronunciation. I really wonder what mm -hmm. are you going to say about it. So in a pronunciation, sometimes it's really important for the speakers. You know how you pronounce the word or how you pronounce that. The word is really important. Sometimes you pronounce a word differently, but they understand it differently. So in this case, so can you just give us some tips for teaching pronunciation? I think the, uh, the, the first and very important thing is, um, and hopefully if there are some teachers who are watching us right now, you can never ever feel yourself inferior just because you are not a native speaker. I think that's the first thing that blocks many teachers from 
making them avoid, you know, teaching mm -hmm. pronunciation because they immediately say, I'm not a native speaker, it's difficult for me. It's not. You don't have to be a native speaker to teach English. You have to be qualified to teach English. So first of all, get rid of that. Uh, I think this, this is how many teachers really block important. themselves. Mm -hmm. I can't teach pronunciation. I'm not a native speaker, no. Just like you, before you teach reading, you read the text, you check if there's any unknown vocabulary, you think about the tasks, it's the same. So before you teach vocabulary, for example, just like you check the meanings, you'll check the pronunciation and stress mm -hmm. and have been, make a note of it, you know. Um, even when I need to write the, ph the phonetic, let's say, symbols on the board, in training sessions we do it, I make a note of it just in case. I mean, I've studied this for four years in linguistics and I've been training people, but still I make notes of things I'm going to put on the board. So um, I think the, the main tip would be knowing that it is, it is your job to teach pronunciation. Not, not being a native speaker doesn't make you, you know, uh -huh. exempt from it. And then it's just being prepared, being ready, uh, being planned, you know, doing your research, uh, mm -hmm. doing your research carefully, knowing how to pronounce things yourself when it comes to words. When it comes to grammar, knowing when you're drilling, knowing what to highlight, you know, like um, contractions and things like uh -huh. that. And then trying to maybe learn different techniques like, you know, finger drilling, back chaining, front chaining, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. How to teach pronunciation is a very good starting point. It's a very good basic level um, book that gives you both increases your knowledge and gives you some I practical see. ideas. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, thank you, Sindhu Thank you for these nice tips about pronunciation. So, thank you very much. There's a question. Yes. Let me ask. Uh, 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 okay. Huh? Some are not, about students. But yeah, it's, it's like, how is the Scottish accent? Oh, uh, <laughs> this. It is the worst, man. It is the worst <laughs> thing ever. And you know, the funny thing is, when we were moving here, we were. Uh, uh, my husband was having job interviews with Scotland and Finland. And one day he asked me, which one, um, which one would you prefer if I got both of the offers? And I like, well, I don't know, but I guess I would like to be in a place where I understand the language spoken, like in Finland it would be the <laughs> case. And my husband was like, what makes you think you will understand the Scottish accent? <laughs> and it's, I mean, with um, normally when you're talking to people, it's not a big deal. But so far, like the postman, people who deliver stuff, almost to got 50 per bus drivers, 50%. I understand. I just listen for the gist. And if I understand the main ideas, <laughs> I I'm see. happy. I, I, I love it. I love the accent, but it is very difficult to understand. Very difficult, yeah. Very difficult. I, 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 I remember before, when I was a university student, I met an, I was, you know, the studying, like English language teaching. Yeah. I met a Scot Scottish person when I was in holidays, I think in uh, Antalya or Bodrum or something like that in Turkey, I asked him, can you repeat it, yours, please? Can you repeat it, please? And maybe three or four times. <laughs> and finally he said, do you understand what I say? He asked me and I said, yeah, I, no, I don't. Ah, I was thinking that something wrong about my English. I was thinking that, but I thought that something wrong about your ears. He asked, he told me that. I said, I don't have any problem with my ears. I just don't understand what you are saying to me because of your accent. It's so different. Yeah, you know, it is. It's until different. that time, when I was a university student and I, you know, I was really surprised. Do I, I was thinking that, does he really you know speak english or what what language is this i was thinking like this and then of course after i said this i can't understand you he tried to speak slowly yeah, yeah. and the then i understand what he said here as well like the scottish teachers i work with for example i can understand them they also i think learn to neutralize themselves a little bit but the people on the street obviously <laughs> like they gave me i do one of my classes i do in a um, community center i don't go to the college i go to the community center and uh, people come for the class and on the first day the the guards there needed to give me a tour and explain to me where the 
um, fire exit signs. I swear to God, I understood 50. I just nodded the whole time. <laughs> I like <laughs> to, you, just okay, try okay. to make sure I understand where the <laughs> fire exits are. It's really yeah. nice, nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you, Ijeom. <laughs> it's a nice one. All right. So let's move to another question about it. So my next question is going to be about the reflection, which is really important for teachers and for students. Why is the reflection important for teaching and learning? Now, it's, we place high importance on it in our courses as well, because if you don't think about what you did, why you did it, how it resulted, then it's just basically you wouldn't, the learning wouldn't really take place, especially, especially when it comes to something like teaching, when you plan something, but it doesn't mm -hmm. always go according to the plan. So it's very mm -hmm. important because we work with people. There's always unexpected stuff. So it's all very important to reflect on your lesson, uh, think about what um, happened, what, what worked, what didn't work, so that you can say, okay, this, I can do it difficultly next time. I can um, do this like this. And like also being more, because it's very difficult when you're doing something, thinking about it it's at the same time is very difficult difficult but if you think about it after it happened okay i did this why did i do it it gives you um insights into your own practices as a teacher as well so it's it's very important to i think mm -hmm. it's the key i mean it's not it's not a course or anything like that you do really the key to professional development is constantly reflecting on what you are doing what worked for one group of learners what didn't work how you can do things better that's that's the most important starting point for um professional development i'd say i see i see okay thank you thank you Jim. okay so now let's move to another this is a really funny question so can you tell us a, can you tell us five adjectives hmm. that describe an effective language teacher okay i should have prepared this shouldn't i wait <laughs> <laughs> um confident definitely okay one Five adjectives. Hmm. Positive. Okay, two. That's very important. Um, knowledgeable, of course. No, three. Um, I, I'll say adventurous because I think okay. teachers should try okay, new things four. in the classroom. I see. And, and the last one. Hard yeah, hard five. Hard. Well done. Sometimes, Great. <laughs> uh, sometimes my um, trainees, when my trainees complain about the workload in full-time CELTA, I say, well, if you're not ready to work hard, don't become a teacher. Like, run mm -hmm. when, it's, <laughs> when you still have the time. Because unfortunately, that's the reality. We end up working really hard wherever we go. I see. I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Good, wonderful, Singo so Jam. Okay. Do, do you do this in all of your shows? Five adjectives. No, there are well. yeah five adjectives. There are two or three, and some couple questions are the same because okay. every every educators you know they give the different answers to the questions. It's really different. Okay, just one maybe answer. You know, this is similar to the others, but most of them are different and different explanations. Just you like should, you did it, different. Mm -hmm. You should do like a. Round down of the adjective one and come up with all the most like a word cloud of most commonly mentioned adjectives. <laughs> I, I, I have different nice. plans about it. I'll different plans about it. I'll do that <laughs> and I'll share it soon. Yeah. Okay. And here is another question that really um, I don't know what's going to say about it. It's about the superpowers. Like if you could if you could have one superpower to use in the classroom, what would it be and how would it help? In the classroom? Uh-huh. Um, probably stopping the time or being able to turn back the time, I say. Nah. We had a show when I was young. I'm, I'm too old. You know, this girl who could stop the... Ah, I know, it kind of. It, it, it I kind don't, I of. Don't I don't know. Sabrina? I don't know. Sabrina no. was a witch. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, I guess stopping the time or being able to turn back the time so that like if something happened that like i know something didn't work i can go back and fix it uh -huh. so i guess in the classroom that would be a good power uh, <laughs> i can understand oh there's there's uh from Mel yes, Tamojan saying can i have your email address if you don't mind i might have a couple right of questions in the comments. Tell write in the comments will it show 
Sure. Uh, let me let me tell you, Meltem hocam, I'll 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 send you the email address of Simge hocam after the session to you, or I can share her email address on the on my page. So if you have any questions, or you can write Simge hocam if you want your yeah, email I just address. Yeah, on the yeah. Hmm. Ah, okay. You have already written down. Okay, I see it. Okay. Uh, YouTube channel website or something like mm, YouTube channel. I'm not. I'm not really uh, following that at all. But uh, for learners, my friends can follow. If you mean to improve themselves as as teachers or learners, um, the British Council website, BBC Learning English website, those are good ones for um, mm -hmm. students. I think all I levels. See. No. <laughs> um, for teachers, uh, for your students, yeah, definitely uh, BBC Learning or British Council. Uh, BBC Learning for teens and children, BBC Learning Kids, I think they have. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, those I'd say definitely for learners, the most, the, the best interactive ones are there. Perhaps whichever book uh, you are using, the online practice of that could be good as well but if you want it I to see. be interactive i guess bbc learning and british council are the best okay thank you Ajam. there is an, another question here let me show you huh what book we will oh we will come about that book what book would you recommend if she was supposed to recommend only one book we will talk about the books uh, in in the next uh, questions So just wait, wait. And thanks, see. thanks. <laughs> okay. Nice I I don't know I, because the name I can't see the name. So thanks. To so that love and remember all sessions with It's you. Salta with, with us. Yeah, Salta, you were. I as some of you said, Birsel, you were there. Salta, M M R R. I don't know what's your name. If you just write your name here, especially feedback sessions. M M R R A. Write your name because I can't understand. Uh, from that one, like uh, I think she one of one of your uh, Salta course students. Yeah, all Salta. And New York for <laughs> books at our school. Bir seller baş. Okay, thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you. Hi, Mira, Mira from Kazakhstan. Ah, hi Mira. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. All right, so let's move to another question, Ojam. Okay, so what was the I think probably last in, in this couple, in two years, we all have lots of big challenge in our lifetime. So, but what was the biggest challenge that you faced this year? Um, was it this year? No, I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, two years ago, we suddenly had to turn everything online. So I guess... Uh, that that was a challenge at the beginning because that meant I had to work with in our Salta courses we had to work with a lot of freelancers uh, mm -hmm. and trying to work as a um, team uh, all people from different places was a bit challenging last year in our summer well actually we did the face to face Salta and I think that was a bit challenging as well although after all that time you know, trying to teach with a mask on and everything. Ah. And you see, you guys are still like that here. Yeah, we still. You don't wear masks. Absolutely. Don't wear it. We, we're still wearing it. And I don't know when we're going to take it off. Mm. Uh, in the classrooms, it's compulsory that we have yeah. to wear the mask. So, I mean, I probably know. the biggest challenge in terms of my teaching was that. Biggest challenge in terms of my life would be waiting for the English visa and then moving, <laughs> have to quarantine as well because we traveled during the yeah, pandemic. I can understand. So I had mm -hmm. to stay 10 days in my mother-in-law's house in, in England. Couldn't leave the house. Yeah. I see. It's, it's really challenging. That was a big okay. challenge. So, another, is it okay? Let's move to another one. Okay. Sure. And, you know, it's really, especially for me also, it's really important um, to have a, a good report in the classroom. So mm -hmm. what, uh, when, when you think about this report, what is the importance of report for you? Well, um, I think that's, um, to me, it is very important because if you ask me, it is one thing that you can't really teach. Everything else, like I can teach you how to teach reading, how to teach, all that can be taught. But you can't teach someone to have good relations with 
they're learned. Mm -hmm. that, I think that comes from inside. That when some people say teachers are born, not made, I think that's what they mean. Um, so it's very important because that's the beginning point. I mean, no matter how uh, technically how good your lessons are, if you if you don't treat your students as individuals, if you don't build that um, relationship, if you don't build that positive uh, learning atmosphere, learning wouldn't really take place. Especially as the ages go down, this is very uh -huh. important. When I watch classes in like um, grade one, for example, I honestly, as a trainer, I don't really care if they use the correct method for drilling. I check whether the learners are having fun and whether they are happy and whether it looks like they have a positive built um, or developed a positive um, attitude mm -hmm. towards English. That's the most important thing in the initial levels of teaching, if you ask me, and it that comes from rapport and the teacher's presence, I for see. sure. Okay, thank you. And so thank you very much for the answer, Tingrojan. Uh, I'm sure that you have uh, read lots of things about ELT, probably mm -hmm. the questions that uh, one of our uh, mm -hmm. audiences book. asked yeah. about it, about the book. In this case, can you, what can you suggest us to read about ELT? Um, I really, if you're at the initial stages of your um, career or if you haven't really read many books, the how-to series are great. I think we just talked about how to teach pronunciation. Uh -huh. And they have the whole set, how to teach vocabulary, how to teach um, reading, everything. So uh, written by a different person, not, not all of them are by different people, but uh, I think most are. Uh, to me, that's the, I think speaking is written by Thornbury, I think. Um, but yeah, the how to series would be my starting point because they not only mm -hmm. give you the necessary, um, the brief knowledge of whatever you need to know, for example, about mm -hmm. teaching speaking, let's say, but they also have practical classroom ideas. I so see. Okay. Ideas. I, anything with Thornbury, I really like, by the way. I like him so much. <laughs> yeah, he, Thornbury, yeah. To me, he, he's like very like laid back and, you know, can um, express himself very clearly, so it's not very, like for instance, for pronunciation, Adrian Underhill is the kind of, you know, the starting yeah. point of everything, but his book is difficult to read. I wouldn't recommend it to Salta level people. It's a bit more, I see. you would need a better working knowledge of um, pronunciation, phonetics and all that, phonology and all I that. See. Whereas uh, Thornbury's work is usually suitable for uh, teachers with less experience or they have who haven't had a um, formal training i see thank you thank you very much senior jump okay so i I, also, I wonder what's gonna say about this question this question is really a kind of a little bit complicated but it's fine when you uh can you write the name of the how writer to, I mean, or how to and then whatever reason how yeah to. you can write now or we can you can also send me after the session so I can share them with them if you want. Uh, so how to just how, how to, teach. to series? Yeah, how, how to, to teach, teach vocabulary? Them. How to teach pronunciation? How to teach reading, speaking, or writing? This series is it's the, the dimension here. Okay, so when you think about five W's and how, like who, what, okay. where, when, and why, that questions. What questions come to your mind about ELT world? Mm. Difficult, huh? <laughs> who, who, who am I asking? Give me, give me my audience. Like, the question like it's about yeah, no ELT world. When you think about like who, what, where, when, and why, and how, like what questions come to your mind about ELT world? Like this can be maybe about the teaching, about I don't know, learners, about teachers, or whatever. I don't know. Because like, imp is it like important que like things, uh, questions we need to consider kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, let's say questions that a teacher should ask himself or herself. Let me think okay. that way. Um, definitely, how can my learners benefit from this lesson? Okay. First thing. I'd say, um, 
How will, How will yeah. be a good question? Yeah. Online is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like where, what, like when? Yeah, this is difficult. I can't really formulate this one. Um, definitely should think about like when should I stop one activity and move to another because that's something like uh -huh. uh, would change in every classroom, I'd say. With how I, I keep thinking about how for some reason. It's <laughs> so always comes to that. Yeah, what, what language how. should I focus? Um, what errors should I correct? I think that's very important because that's something a teacher should be doing. Um, when my <laughs> chair suddenly. <laughs> but, um, no, not completely online, Mert. I, I hope not. Um, yeah, those are the questions I can think of. I couldn't, I couldn't do. Okay, so not not a problem. It's yeah. okay. So no problem, Singer Jump. All right, let's move to. Uh, Aya, you already asked two questions about it, like how and okay, and what errors mm -hmm. and how will uh, the end and start it. That's okay, not a problem. Okay then. So completely online and uh, no, I guess no, impossible. No, no, I don't think it's no be... only. Please, no. I hate online yeah, yeah. lessons. Like full time online. You know what? I mean, based on my observations, I haven't done a, a hybrid class teaching. Um, but based on my observations, the worst is when you have both. Like if it's just online, everybody is online. Or if it's just face-to-face, -face, everybody is face-to-face. -face. Uh, that's fine. But when you have some students in front of you and some students online, it's the worst. It's the worst, honest to God. And I, don't, I can't see an effective way of teaching like that. One group will certainly be lost and not cared for completely. Okay, not lost, maybe that's an exaggeration, but their needs won't be met completely. Exactly. But the last year, I mean, and this year, I had that experience that was really, I was in the classroom and I was also, the, the students were on, some of them are, you know, on the screen and some of them are in the classroom. I was teaching something and then I was turning to them and I was asking some questions about the same. And then again, I was turning to the class and asking the same questions and I was trying to follow the both sides. Are they, are, they, are they doing it or not? Or can you follow me or not? Or something like this. And I was sometimes in the group works, you know, I was creating a, a room on Zoom and over there and ascending them over there as a group and I was making the same different groups in the classroom and I was trying to check them by the way I was going to the, near them and I was checking them like are you doing it is it easy do you have any questions and when they say no I was going in front of the the screen and I'm like the board by the smart board and I was asking I was looking at the camera and do you have any questions <laughs> or something like this or can you yeah, do that horrible. it was really really you know, the double effort you, you, yeah, know, the, yeah, you yeah, do there. Definitely. That's really hard. It's really, really hard. There's a Good question, someone asking, tongue. should we use our mother, lang mother language while teaching English? I really wonder this. I would be very happy if you answer. Thanks in advance. Yeah. All right. Um, the most straightforward answer is no, but I'm not one of those people who are, you know, um, complete 100% English, never speak. No, of course, sometimes you may need to. I think a good teacher is the one who makes effective use of their knowledge of L1 anyway, not not completely banning L1, but making effective use of it in the classroom. If you share the L1 with the learners, you should definitely make use of it. But the problem with using L1 in the classroom is um, students are too easily, um, they get into the habit of expecting everything to be done in Turkish once you switch to Turkish. So once you give instructions in Turkish, for example, because you think it's too complicated, the task is too complicated, uh -huh. then once they know the Turkish explanation will follow, they stop listening to the English. And that's the problem. So when we say don't use Turkish in the classroom, let's say there, or if you keep using Turkish to teach vocabulary, then uh, you're like a English-Turkish dictionary, aren't you? I mean, why, why are they in the classroom? They can just, right now, they can just, do it on their phone. They don't need to spend 50 minutes in your lesson. So, um, of course, sometimes you may need it in the classroom. If you share the L1, if you can use the L1, sure. But if you make it one of your key teaching techniques, there are problems with it because then it's not very effective. Uh, learners keep, like, learners get used to it. Learners don't get trained to communicate in English. Plus, 
you are limiting yourself as a teacher because then you become a teacher who can only teach in a monolingual environment where you mm -hmm. share the album. But what if you end up in a class with other learners or what if you end up teaching somewhere else but not in Turkey? So it's not good for your teaching skills either, relying on uh, the album of the learners. Uh -huh. I see. Thank you very much, Sinjo Hocam, for the answer of the question. So... I'm going to ask you next questions about the key skills. Like, and by the way, the only two questions left. <laughs> the time flies, you know? Yeah, we have answered almost okay. lots of questions. Exactly. And here is the next question. What do you think are the key skills that we will need in the future? Adaptability for sure. I mean, we have to adapt immediately to a new teaching situation, didn't we? When it, when everything went online, so I think mm -hmm. that's that's one. Um, I think that's good though, because I think I always see when teachers want to be um, beneficial for their learners. I always see them trying to find lots of extra materials, look at different books, this and that. But um, I think an effective teacher is the one who can look at the coursebook material, doesn't need to bring so many things from outside, but can make the coursebook material mm -hmm. fit the learner's need better by minor modification. And that's a win-win because the teacher then doesn't have to spend so much time looking for other materials. Sometimes you end up going to websites that are not very reliable and you may use something wrong. So um, I think being able to work with what you got is very important. And then being adaptable in the sense that adapting to different um, teaching situations would be one. Um, nothing new, but nothing else, if you ask me. I see. All right. No problem. That's the, the rest is That's the, the same. The, I mean, the rest is the same. Really okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank maybe you digital <laughs> uh, related to this material thing. Um, digital literacy. I, I was just yeah. saying. Yeah, uh, digital, digital literacy. literacy. Yeah. Very good, Azra. Well, <laughs> Thank you. As we say. <laughs> <laughs> and four C's are necessary. What is four C's? Like the the twenty first century skills, like critical thinking, like communic. I think she mentioned this one. Communi I have communication. No idea. Communicate. Uh huh. That one. Can you just write the, the, the definitions exactly Maybe the, also here? The, like... um, the ability to train, I think this is very important. The ability to train learners to become world citizens. I think some schools are already, I've, I've done a talk on this in the before the pandemic, um, Izmir Turk College. Global yeah, citizenship, you mean, huh? Something yes, like yes, ah. yes. So um, values like diversity, you know, um, not being a racist and all that, you know, those kind of more behavior related, not English uh -huh. related, of course. I, I think see. those are very important as well. Any any teacher of any subjects that should be, especially people working with lower level learners um, by age, by lower level, I mean, uh, age wise, primary level learners, teachers, sorry, need to be careful to um, uh -huh. incorporate those kind of values, value education in their um, teaching. Okay. Uh, communication, communication creativity, collaboration. creativity, collaboration, and critical yeah. thinking. And yeah. critical thinking, that's the fourth one. Communication, creativity, collaboration, and critical thinking. That's the fourth one. Ah, series. Ray! Is, I'm guessing Ray is the Yeah, Ray. Ray. The uh, Half to Teach series includes... I have to teach reading. It doesn't... What do I have no reading. I have Walk up, grammar, reading, pronunciation, listening, writing, answer. speaking, but really? not how to teach reading. All right, then. So it's not included reading. Okay. <laughs> I, I have a um, book on initial level reading, but I guess it's called something else and I didn't know. Thank you so much, Ray. There is a, by the way, there is another question here. Zeynep, uh, as Ojam is asking, Kojam, I have a problem in my classes hmm. while eliciting vocabulary. In the middle of the elicitation, yeah. students just say the Turkish meaning of the word. What can I do to solve this problem? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, you, you need to warn those students. Obviously, they are kind of interfering with a good practice you have there. Uh, maybe talk to them. Maybe have this attitude that, like, uh, I understand you are a lot faster than your friends and you understand what I'm talking about, but then you are kind of, um, 
getting um, how can i say like um they should also have the time to think about things so maybe in a nicer tone warn them not to do it i'd say definitely a big uh-huh. problem but they just have to get used to it without giving the meaning in mother tongue uh, yeah. it's, it's fine to ask us of questions we we are teachers we like <laughs> questions um, yeah. well um for concrete words pictures obviously but in any way find a way to contextualize the lang- uh, the word convey the meaning of the word this could be a story this could be a picture uh, this could be something you show like if it's a real object and then try and um once you are clear with the meaning try and check if they understood if they can't come up with the english word you can say it that's no problem you don't have to wait to be elicited but just try and convey the meaning and then um check their understanding with simple questions and don't allow them to um switch to turkish that would be the shortest way to mm-hmm. put it i see thank you thank you Ajay. another question we have we have lots of questions did she have a conversation did she have a conversations in english with her turkish students outside the class to encourage I mean did you have a conversation uh, in with your Turkish students to encourage them? Yeah, I mean I think it is important to speak be consistent and speak in English at all times I guess even outside the classroom that would be a nice thing to do. They it's kind of the way they this is the way I do it with my son. I I only speak Turkish to my son so he he learns Turkish. Um, it's basically the, this is how the bilingual brain works so they need to code let's say so mother um, Turkish for him father English so uh, maybe that's the same with your learners Le- your learners should always um, associate you or connect you with English mm-hmm. and should think okay I can only speak in English to my teacher and that's very important because I've seen lessons where the learners were saying things in turkish asking something in turkish for example and the teacher answers in english that teacher i'm sure feels good thinking i didn't speak in turkish i don't like but the, the key there is to make learners understand that communication is done in english in this classroom full stop or communication with me has to be done in English, in English in or outside of the classroom so yeah Mart, I think that could be a, a nice nice point uh, I, I did I had those kind of teachers I studied in um, Atatürk uh, Anatol in high school in the prep year the first year uh, in the corridors teachers wouldn't speak to us um, in Turkish yeah nice Nice. Yeah, that should be like that. It's 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 a good way to do that. All right. Thank you very much, Singo Jam. And the last question is on the way. Okay, ready for it? Yes. All right. Here is the last question. What is your motto? Oh my gosh. I was <laughs> I was just about to say something that's not very professional. <laughs> um time heals everything, I'll say. All right. Nice time heals everything. Okay. Yeah. Nice question. We are definitely time heals everything. Definitely. We should do that. All right. Thank you. That's all my questions, Singo Jam. Okay Thank then. You so so before before ending our live session, but, but would you like to add anything else? Thank you so much. This was so much fun. <laughs> uh because I've never done anything like this before. So, um I already wrote my email. I don't use Instagram. I am on LinkedIn though. If you add me Simge Gulaç or Grady, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh if you want to ask anything about teaching, feel free. If you are considering doing a course, this uh, account I'm using uh, would be the account to follow uh, or our LinkedIn account as well, obviously. Uh and yeah, it was lovely and hope to see some of you who were watching in the <laughs> yeah. training courses at some stage as well all right thank you very much thank you very much uh singo jam really it was a fruitful session and it was really honored thank to have you, you in teacher talk session and that was and also i will i'm really happy that you share your ideas you. your experiences and it's really a metino jam is also here lots metino of jam love from here. ankara metino jam is now a salsa trainer as well you know yeah We've yeah sure and gulfam jam also is here oh, gulfam also yeah she said yeah she said great interview 
you and thank you very much for her also to join and and everybody to join us here and not leave us alone and also thank you very much to give this chance to us to Singe Hocam to have a chance to listen her lovely ideas and great experiences and also the most important thing you share your time with us thank, thank you very you much so. Singe Hocam and uh, Singe Hocam uh, was with us tonight and that was really great conversation that we have with her and i'm sure that uh, you are going to use or you are going to remember her ideas her suggestions in your classes or in your life all right then that's all from teacher talks tonight and we will see each other next monday at the same on the same day at the same time if you remember it with a different educator from different part of the world until that time take care of yourselves and peace everybody and uh, linkedin account simge gulaj or grady it's name, name exactly okay just write them i'm, I'm waiting for that simge jump and that's all from us and also a big thank you for you to, who ah, attended please. here and join us and we will see each other next week too all right then until that time bye bye everybody and peace bye bye ojam see you bye, bye. bye.